Do you want to take your webcam and microphone from looking and sounding like this to this? Today's video will show you how. The video you are watching right now is recorded on a $200 webcam and is akin to what people will spend even more money on mirrorless and DSLR video cameras to get the same result as. I am blown away. With this latest update, your webcam might as well be a proper video camera, especially if you're just doing you know, video conferencing or being a guest on someone's podcast or what have you. This is awesome. I'm Ebos Vox, the stream professor, and NVIDIA Broadcasts finally got a big new update a year after release here, introducing some new features, some bug fixes, and a lot of effort put in by the team, specifically with regards to feedback from you all, the community who have submitted samples, feedback, beta tested, and all of that, and NVIDIA is super stoked that you guys have been so involved, and I am as well, because the results we are getting from this is just getting even more better. So the NVIDIA broadcast update releasing today introduces some bug fixes, uh, some resource management usage so it can use less resources, although the video effects are still quite heavy on your graphics card, as well as a reduced file size from 200 megabytes to 45 megabytes for the app itself, which is pretty neat. Uh, and the results you can get out of it with the right setup are actually pretty stellar thanks to some of the new effects at play here. So, so I have the app pulled up here and I also have Task Manager pulled up so that we can keep an eye on GPU usage for this specific, uh, for the effects going on here. You can see here with OBS recording and I am using InVink for recording and compositing as well as NVIDIA broadcast specifically running for these camera effects right now, we're seeing 21% 3D usage on my graphics card, 17, 16% on the CUDA core usage and then ignore video encoding because that's just InVink at work here. Uh, and this is running the camera at 1080p 30. If we bump it up to 1080p 60, we start to see much higher 3D usage, although CUDA usage stays basically the same, but we are starting to see we're getting upwards close to 30% 3D usage of the graphics card here. And this is on a Titan RTX. So keep in mind, this is the performance impact it will have when you're specifically, you know, if you're gaming on the same computer, you're go you're going to have some performance impact. So I do want to note it. Since this is a 30 FPS video, I will drop us back down to 30 here just to keep things in the line. But let's walk through the effects because we have a little bit of a, an improved UI here in that we now have two effects you can run at once per device. And so, for example, right now on the microphone, you can do the normal noise removal, but now we also have a new audio effect, which is room echo removal. And we're actually gonna set this up with my secondary microphone here. So I've gone ahead and switched over to my clock audio microphone I have mounted on my desk here, and I specifically have it moved up here where it's picking up reverb off of my monitors. And I'm talking loudly to try to accentuate this effect because not only does uh, NVIDIA broadcasts have the normal noise removal effect, but now they have room echo removal. Now this, along with the new video effect, is still in beta and they want it, your samples and your tests and stuff if you want to voluntarily submit them here. But if we turn this on, it should reduce the amount of reverb or echo that it's picked up from the room. So now we have switched over to this device, so I will switch it in OBS real quick. So now we've switched over to the clock audio microphone with the room echo removal enabled. And so we can see here if it has any effect. I will drag it up to 100%. Bam, bam, thank you, ma'am, bam, bam. And then we're going to drag it back down to 0% to see if there's an impact there. So now we can stack this with the normal noise removal. However, you can see the intensity of the room echo removal and the noise removal are linked. So whichever intensity we drag is the intensity that you get for either effect. So you can see how it sounds here. Test, test, one, two, three. Actually, I'm gonna pull up some of my white noise test here. I'm gonna turn one of the effects off. I'm gonna turn off noise removal. Test, test, this is just with room echo removal on. And now noise removal is on. Drag it up to 100%. Drag it back down to 0%. Drag it up to about halfway. Back up towards 100, but not quite at 100. You get the idea.
And then the app itself actually gives you the option to record and play back your audio clip to see how the effects actually impact your device, which is pretty neat. Now you also have the ability to add these, eff these same effects to your speaker output, which is incredibly handy for interviews where you got someone that's being inconsiderate and calling, or, you know, they're busy calling in and they're, you know, out in public or something and you got someone, or you just got someone phoning in in general, or they've got something loud in the background of their shot. You can run this in real time to help clean up your guests ad spots, or even just ad spots, your guest interview spots or something like that, or even just if you, you know, you're doing a Discord call and someone's just got some really obnoxious noise on, you can kick this up and run it on your speakers as well. And before we get to the camera effects, I want to tell you about this video sponsor. Today's video is probably not the first video you've seen in your sub box about the NVIDIA broadcast update. Getting these videos up and rushing to meet embargoes and deadlines and all of that is one of many frustrating aspects of making content here on YouTube and playing the game with the algorithm. That's why I partnered with some of my creator friends to build our own platform where we don't have to worry about that stuff. My videos are higher quality there, ad-free, and often extended from the YouTube versions. The site is called Nebula, and we've partnered with CuriosityStream. Nebula features YouTube's top education creators, such as Legal Eagle, Thomas Frank, and Low Spec Gamer. CuriosityStream saw what we were doing for educational content and wanted to partner up. We've worked out a deal where if you sign up with the link below, you not only get access to CuriosityStream and their library of thousands of educational and documentary content, but you get access to Nebula for free for the duration of your subscription to CuriosityStream. For a limited time, CuriosityStream is offering 26% off their annual plan, making it less than $15 a year, again, for both CuriosityStream and Nebula. While you're there, check out Meet the Avatars to really dive into some super meta discussion about technology and the ways that we're going to have to have some serious conversations about how we use it. Head on over to curiositystream.com slash epos for the best deal in streaming and get access to both sites for just under $15 per year. It's absolutely crazy. Go do it. Moving on over to the video tab, we have also the ability to stack up to two NVIDIA broadcast effects at the same time, but we also have a new effect, which is also supposed to be in beta, even though it doesn't say it, which is video noise removal. Now, I consider video noise removal to be incredibly powerful for webcams, specifically as it cleans up the image. In fact, one of the biggest complaints in every webcam review I make is that people are complaining about the background noise of the webcams, of too much noise and grain on screen, even when I don't seem to have that issue in my copy of the reviews, as was with the case with the Avermedia PW513. So you can choose your webcam, choose your resolution and format, and then come down here and add these effects. And like I said, you can stack up to two of them. So we can disable background blur, and then we can disable video noise removal. Now you're not going to see a significant impact here because I've balanced my lighting for this webcam, but you can see kind of on the wall and things like that. If I flip this on, things clean up and you get a fairly pleasing degree of face smoothing applied by nature of just removing the noise as well. Now, of course, I am in the middle of filming other projects behind me, which doesn't look so great when I'm trying to do, you know, video calls with a meeting or something. And so I quite enjoy just turning on a little bit of that background blur as it helps kind of keep the background a little bit less distracting and just looks more kind of industrial or, you know, it's just a backdrop or something going on here. Now, of course, you do have strength sliders, for background blur, you have strong or weak noise removal for uh, the noise removal, and then you have performance or quality mode for the background blurring. As you can see here, if I move my hands around, we get quite a bit of detection there in performance mode, uh, but we've dropped our CUDA usage quite a bit here, or at least a little bit. Um, but if we bump it up to quality mode, the detection around my hand is a little bit better, a little bit. Um, but it will use a little bit more resources, even if we don't have an exact, you know, description here. Uh, however, the ability to stack things opens up some possibilities if you're wanting to use a real camera as well. So we're going to switch over to my Sony a7C. Now you can see here, video noise removal doesn't work at 4K apparently. Good to know. So as long as you have your lighting set up properly and everything balanced and the like, you don't really need video noise removal on a real camera anyway. So it not working at 4K isn't necessarily to our detriment, but you might want, you know, background replacement or background removal. So for example, let's do background removal. We again have performance or quality mode. Performance, ironically, <laughs> that's funny. Performance is doing a better job of cutting out my, excuse me, my webcam in the foreground than the quality mode is. That's fascinating. 
but then we may also want to stack another effect like auto frame. So now you can have background removal and auto frame at the same time. So I can come in here and add a background that I took at the zoo trip today with my family and then it will auto frame me, theoretically. They have tweaked the auto framing based on feedback about it being a little too finicky to be used for a lot of use cases. So if we actually zoom in a little bit more here. There we go. It's still a little bit of a goofy effect due to the fact that it keeps you in the center. Like, if you get too drastic with it, like, this isn't going to look super great. But if you're already in the center, and then... See, I don't like that it doesn't zoom in on you anymore. Like, trying to keep you at the center isn't necessarily the most natural look. It just looks like it's panning all over the place. But for certain use cases, it might be appropriate. But you couldn't do this before without some crazy wonky workarounds. So this is pretty cool. Um, then, of course, we could just do normal background blur and just continue blurring it even more so. Like, it was already... Pr Actually, does this even look different than the way I had it before due to my lens aperture? Uh, barely. So we could add, like, a little bit more lens blur. And because my background is already blurred out so much, like, the the differences around your outlines aren't going to be quite as noticeable if you just want like ultimate background blur and you're using a camera that maybe blurs out the background a little bit but not as much as you would like this is an option available to you i guess uh, something i also wanted to note that i don't know how new it is um they did add the option to access the camera's individual uvc controls through here so if you want to do brightness or whatever i did want to point out since we are running at 4k you can see the GPU usage has increased substantially. Now, how much of that was dedicated to that image? Okay, we had about a 8% increase due to that image blur effect I was running. But still, actually, no, we're climbing back up. So, yeah, we're, we're running at 4K is having a significant resource impact. So, they are working on trying to improve the resource usage overall so that it doesn't impact your game as much. But stacking effects specifically will continue to scale it even more so. Um... Now, granted, auto frame isn't necessarily one of the more intense effects, but how I was doing with the webcam where it was, you know, noise removal and everything else, like, it can get pretty crazy. Now, of course, the workaround to reduce your usage is to reduce the resolution. So if we drop it down to 1080p30, I got to reset my device in OBS. We're down to a 20% 3D impact and a 11 to 15% CUDA impact, whereas we were over 50% at 4K. So... Worth keeping in mind that, especially if you're doing a Zoom call where you're not getting the full resolution anyway, or your primary focus is a stream where you're streaming at 1080p or a tiny face cam of a stream, if your webcam supports a lower resolution, I would recommend doing that. And so for one final demo here, I want to show uh, a cheap webcam here. So here we have a $40 Victor webcam that... I've balanced the lighting as best I could for it. It doesn't look terrible, but this is a demo of the noise levels. If I make my light any brighter, I will get overexposed no matter how I try to mess with the camera settings. So this is about how well lit it can be without just lighting up my whole room. We got noise all over my shirt. We got noise on my skin. We got noise on my hat in the background and the shadows. So here we can come in here and add effect. And this is where the video noise removal kicks in. We turn that on. It's not perfect. There's still some noise. Granted, we could overcompensate for that with some more light and maybe trying to tear, tone down the gain a little bit more. Like if I crank gain down to zero, that gets rid of some of it. Uh, but you can see here, my face is already starting to overexpose and we still don't have... It's not fully removed, but it's cleaned up. Like it looks more natural than this with where you have literal like dots. This just looks more like compression artifacting, and it's a little bit more pleasing and easy to work with. And if we combine that with background blur, now you just have a little bit of noise on me, but the background noise isn't distracting at all, and you're ready to go. Like, this is perfectly suitable. And then you scale it down into a face cam view, and it's totally passable for how a webcam could look on stream. And an advantage of the video noise removal effect is that the more noise you have in an image like all of this grain here in this image this is much harder to compress especially at a low bit rate for live streaming so by removing this before it hits obs and has to go through the encoding and compression stages you're actually saving yourself a little bit of hassle in trying to encode and compress that later on and then of course you can stack it with the background blur to remove it all from the background and you have a 40 dollars webcam 
that looks better than anything I've ever paid $40 before in the past in terms of video. It's especially, again, for a video call, for an interview, for teaching a class. This is fine. This is great. Now, you do need some degree of GPU power. We're still at 23% CUDA, 23% 3D. Um, and again, it's going to be intense, especially playing DirectX 12 games or games, you know, games like Warzone. I wouldn't recommend it. I covered that during my NVIDIA 3000 series launch that running this kind of stuff with games like Warzone is not a good idea, but other titles is generally okay. Like, yeah. So this is the update. This is NVIDIA Broadcast 2021 update. It's got a lot of cool stuff and I just kind of wanted to show it off here. And of course, this is actually combined for this specific webcam with the color grading plugin. Um, I believe it's part of StreamFX. I could be wrong because um, it comes with this green, nasty green tint out of box. So I just turned down green gamma just a tiny bit. Looks way more natural. And then you can, I also have a little bit of sharpening applied. I turn that down, bam. Um, and so then you can combine that with some of the other effects. In fact, there's a new uh, OBS color grading like source plugin where I can add a freaking waveform to the screen here. I have a whole, I can add a waveform here and I can get color grading tools right here in my scene. So I know exactly, you know, what my colors look like. So there's a waveform um, and then there's also a vector scope. If I do the same thing here. No, my, this isn't going to give us anything helpful, honestly, but we get a vector scope. I will have a link to this plugin in the description below. More powerful tools are coming to streamers, and I could not be more stoked. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hit the like button if you did. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides, and go check out our sponsor, and our Nebula and Curiosity Stream. I'm, they're a huge part of this channel's success. And if you missed it, we launched a music service, which is focused on rock and heavy metal, the music you've been hearing in the background of videos for pretty much all of 2021. Link in the description as well. Thank you so much for your support. I'll see you next time.